Mistakes are inevitable. The question is, how do you fix them? Yeah, we've all been there. You're doing your bit of joinery or whatever operation you have going on, and everything goes swimmingly for 99.7% of it. And then on that last little bit, something blows out. You get a, a broken corner, the machine bites just wrong, and you get some tear out, whatever the thing is. It, it inevitably happens on every project. So what do you do when that happens? Do you throw the project out? No. Do you scrap that piece of wood and start over? Maybe, sometimes, but sometimes you're working with a material that you can't alter. Or maybe simply you don't have enough material to alter what you've already done, so you need to repair it instead. This happens on every project. The question is, how do you repair it so that nobody knows that the mistake ever happened? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So here's the situation in this particular instance. I was cutting my dovetails the other day, which if you wanna see how I did that, you can check out the link in whichever corner it exists in. And literally on the last corner, I was just finishing up the dovetails and I got this little bit of blowout here. Now, I didn't cover it in that video because this isn't so much a technique issue as it was just an anomaly of the grain. And I can tell that because every other dovetail on all corners are just fine. It just happened to be right here. So for whatever reason, the grain moved in a weird way and the router hit it as it was coming out of the cut and just blew it up. But of course, we can't leave a giant gaping corner busted off like that because when we glue it up, there's going to be this giant hole. So how do we go about fixing that now while it's disassembled so that when we actually get it glued up and finished, nobody's ever going to know that there was a repair there? Well, what I do and what I've mentioned before on this channel is I never throw out my scraps until I'm done with a particular project. So I'm going to go dig through the scrap bin and see if I can find the offcut from this particular piece. If I can, wonderful. If I can't, I'm going to find the closest thing to it. All right, so here's what I grabbed out of the scrap bin. I've got what's very clearly the offcuts from my pieces, though they are the offcuts from the sides, not necessarily from the end grain. I've got two other pieces that I'm reasonably confident are from these pieces or the pieces very close by, which if these won't work, these might give me a pretty good chance of finding an end grain pattern that is, if not identical, then very similar. And lastly, I've got some other offcuts over here, which are just scraps from other boards, which I may be able to use if none of this works. Well, just kind of guessing and mixing and matching at that point. But our first step now is to make sure that we can see very clearly the end grain patterns, both on these pieces and on our actual work piece, which means we got to do a little planing. Now, you'll probably notice that I was planing in both directions, both this way and this way. That's to, of course, make sure that I don't blow out the fibers on either end of these dovetails, because if I were to plane straight through this way, there's a chance that these fibers blow out, which is just gonna cause more problems for me, and same in this direction. Now it's looking pretty good. It's pretty clear what kind of picture I have on this end grain here. So let's see if we can find a piece to match that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to highlight these grain lines with a pencil so you can see them a little clearer because they're pretty faint and difficult to read right now. So I've got one grain line doing this. I've got another one, a third coming in like this, and a fourth down here. Here's my center seam, so I'm not too worried about anything past that. So looking through my offcuts, here's my first piece. Could this potentially work? Sure. Would it end up being the same color? Yeah, that color is a little bit different. But even if it was the same color, you see how much tighter the growth rings are on this piece? So this piece is out. This piece has much wider growth rings. And you can see they're probably pretty close. But again, I think this color differential is going to be pretty extreme 
It doesn't have to be perfect, but perfect would be nice. So I'm gonna say hard maybe, but we're gonna hold off on that for right now. Now here's a piece you immediately can tell is the same color. So that's a great start. It's a little hard to see these grain lines, so I'm gonna highlight them the same way I did on this piece. Now that's really rough and that could be wrong, but I think it's pretty close. I've got this grain line that should line up pretty nicely and flows through one another really well. And I've got this grain line that's pretty close to a match. That's very close. So between those two things and the color differential being minimal, if not zero, I think this might be our piece. That being said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this face that's gonna get glued on, and then I'm gonna clean up this surface where this break actually was and see if we can't get a good alignment of these pieces. Now, if everything goes according to plan, when the glue is dried and we pare this down, it should, it should completely disappear. And speaking of disappearing, this week's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Man, I knit, that's two weeks in a row I nailed that transition. Now, what in the world is Surfshark? That is an excellent question, so let's break it down for the Luddites amongst us. Surfshark is a VPN, or a virtual private network, that keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information between your device and the internet. This effectively keeps your personal data protected from big companies and potential cyber criminals. So let's say you're kicking it at a coffee shop and you are just browsing the internet for the latest and greatest in old timey hand tools. And you stumble across a plane that is just the sexiest thing you've ever seen and you're like, I need this now. I gotta swipe in, I gotta buy it before anybody else undercuts me. Because we're living in the age of eBay still, apparently. So you whip out the credit card, you start punching in your numbers, and then it strikes you, I'm on public Wi-Fi. One of these other clowns in this coffee shop could be a potential cyber bad guy and steal my credit card information. What to do? And then you remember, you've got Surfshark. So you pop over to the app, you turn on your VPN, and bam! bam! 
You've bamboozled the bad guys with Surfshark's data encryptions. But a VPN is also capable of swapping your device's real location with a new one. This is what's referred to as changing your IP address. This way you can bypass censorship and access content libraries or streaming services from anywhere in the world. So let's say you're on vacation in another country and you really want to watch my hit Netflix show Instant Dream Home. But it's not available wherever you are. With Surfshark, you can simply change your IP address to the US and then you can stream me and the team installing a giant glass dormer with a wildly unnecessary helicopter stunt, all for the love of the game. So, cruise on over to Surfshark.com and use my code ENCURTIS to get an extra three months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. And you can find the link in the description below. All right, so it has been more than 45 minutes, less than an hour. So we're gonna take this clamp off and this tape off and see what our joint looks like. It should be, cured is not the right word, it should be set enough in order to actually pare this down nice and clean, nice and light. So that's what we're gonna attempt to do. So let's take a look. All right, that looks like it's in really good shape. I'm not gonna stress it too much right now. What I'm gonna start to do is I need to pair this in a way where I can clean this up with as little pressure on this joint as possible because we do have some fragile parts floating out here and we don't wanna create any more tear out because tear out's what we just fixed. So here is our repair. You can see right down here is the actual patch that I made because the pencil lines are removed from where I drew out the grain. It looks good. There is, of course, the tiniest of lines in the actual glue seam. I'm not worried about that. Let's actually get some acetone on here for two reasons. Number one, it's going to remove these pencil lines so we can get a clearer look at what the grain is actually doing. And it's going to give us a peek as to what this is all going to look like with finish on it. And that's the thing that matters at the end anyway. That looks pretty damn good. Now, final thoughts before we get out of here. Was it necessary for me to find a grain alignment for that little piece, given that there's only one grain line and it really only ran for a millimeter at most? Probably not. I probably could have gotten away with a different piece and just patched that on and it would have been just fine. However, that's the exact same process I would follow if I did need to match the grain. It would be taking an offcut of this piece patching it into the point where those grains line up as closely as possible and you don't notice a huge differential between the two pieces. So the process is identical even though it might have been mildly superfluous for this particular application. But it's still a quality of work issue. If you want to do great work, this is how you do it. You pay attention to the minute details. So friends, that's another one in the books. I hope this was helpful. And I hope you take away from this not only the technique employed, but also the fact that everything is fixable. Mistakes are going to happen no matter how many years of experience you have. And your job when they occur is just to step back, take a deep breath, and figure out how to move forward. How you're going to fix 
or highlight in some instances the error so that it blends into the piece as a whole and it's not drawing attention to itself as a huge mistake. It's never life altering. It's never project ending. It's just human error. So that's that. I'm going to get back to it, friends. And until next week, cheers. <laughs>